The fundamentals of losing body fat are pretty simple. It's a set of habits that most people already heard of. Create a calorie deficit, get your steps in, lift weights, eat a healthy diet, get plenty of sleep, and then you repeat that over time. But knowing this isn't the problem. The problem is doing this set of habits consistently over a longer period of time. And in this video, I wanna share with you my honest advice for getting lean and how to bridge that gap between knowing a bunch of information and actually doing it. So if you're looking to finally get your goal physique this year, you came to the right video, so let's dive right into it. So the first thing we need to talk about are expectations and the reality of getting a lean physique if you're starting at a high body fat percentage. And the analogy that I like to use for this is climbing a mountain. So let's say you're starting at 30 to 35% body fat, getting down to 25% body fat won't be that hard. You'll be able to get there with some small changes. You control your portions a little bit more, you ditch the snacks, you reduce the alcohol intake a little bit, maybe add a daily walk and lift weights a couple of times per week. That will be enough. You're at the beginning of the climb. You're well rested, you're motivated, the conditions are good. And at that stage of the journey, seeing results isn't that difficult. And the most important thing is just to dive in and get started. Now, once you hit 25% body fat and wanna get down to 18, 20%, this is where things get harder. You're deeper into a climb. Every step is getting more difficult because you're more fatigued. Now you have to follow a path. Otherwise, if you get lost or get into trouble, it's much harder to get help because you're further away from the start. You might even consider taking a couple of breaks to dissipate some of the fatigue and you have to start paying a lot more attention. And the same thing happens with dieting. The leaner you get, the more you have to pay attention to your food intake, your calories and macros, start tracking them at some point, planning for the weekends that are coming up to make sure that you don't fall off track because a couple of days off at that stage might mean that you lost a whole week of progress. So you overall have to be a lot more dialed in. Now, once you hit 18 to 20% and you wanna go down to 10 to 15%, well, that's a whole nother level of difficulty. It's the equivalent of entering that final stage of the climb to get to the top of the mountain where air is thinner, now you're very tired, your joints ache, it's colder, it's windier, and if you twist your ankle or have other small issues come up, those can be a big problem because you're very far from getting help. And it's kind of similar when you're getting to a low body fat percentage. You have to stay very focused. You don't have a lot of margin for error. And the thing is, regardless of which stage of the climb you're in, the fundamental action is the same. It's always about putting one foot in front of the other. But the circumstances have changed so much that even the simplest action of putting one foot in front of the other can get very, very difficult. And the same thing happens when getting to a low body fat percentage. It's still about creating and sustaining a calorie deficit, but that's a lot harder when your calories are already very low, when you're getting very hungry, when you're very diet fatigued and you've already achieved a good result and it's very hard to motivate yourself to go from good to great. So it's not that there's some kind of secret diet or magic plan to get down to 12% body fat. Everybody can get lean, but not everybody is willing to continue reducing their calorie intake, to continue putting in the hard work, to continue making the sacrifices necessary to get there and to stay focused until they get to such a high level goal. That is the honest truth. Now with the reality check out of the way, I wanna give you a few things that will help you stack the odds in your favor. And one of those things is learning how to preserve your willpower. There's a lot of arguments out there about how much willpower we have or whether we can build up our willpower, but one thing is certain, willpower is a very valuable resource. And I personally practice three different habits that help me preserve my willpower that I would highly recommend you implement. The first one is leveraging planning. It's about making decisions before the critical moment. From a nutrition perspective, I would call this doing a lazy diet where you pick five, six different food choices for each of the macronutrients, your protein, carbs, and fats, then creating six, seven different staple meals you enjoy, and then rotating those meals 80, 90% of the time until you gain consistency and start building a lot of momentum. By deciding in advance exactly when, where, and what you're gonna eat, you save yourself a lot of mental energy and willpower. Now, the second thing I like to do is optimize my environment because I know myself, if there's a plate of cookies there or an open bag of chips, it's gonna keep triggering me until I eventually give in. So I wanna make sure that I'm adding friction toward mindless eating and random snacking to make it harder. This means deleting DoorDash or whatever other food ordering app you have on your phone or putting it behind a password, getting rid of all the obvious junk food around you. If you live with other people who want it in the house, you just move it to a part of the house that you don't even know where it is. These are very simple and easy things to do, but they really make a big difference when it comes to consistency. Now, the third thing that I would recommend when it comes to preserving willpower is 
working on your stress resilience and attitude. If you consistently worry about things you can't control or if you don't have a good stress management system in general, you'll find that eventually you start getting drained and you are unable to continue making high quality decisions. And this is when instant gratification comes in. You grab a snack or a slice of pizza, you start saying yes to things that give you short-term pleasure at the expense of your long-term goals. Stress management is an extremely underrated part of getting a great physique and staying consistent. This includes things like taking breaks throughout the day, going for walks, even five minutes of fresh air can make a big difference, meditating, journaling, learning how to have those difficult conversations so you can resolve those stressful issues. In general, investing time to better understand the human experience and developing a more resilient life philosophy. I personally like to study stoicism and I've been doing so now for more than five years and it's really helped me develop a unique life perspective. And life is chaotic and having a life philosophy is a shield that you can also lean on during those very difficult times. And all the things that you can do to better yourself, to be more mentally resilient, confident, emotionally grounded, will translate into more success in fitness and everything else you want to achieve in your life. Now, when it comes to achieving a great physique, one of the highest leverage points is knowing how to effectively build habits. And for this, I would recommend that you utilize the flexible habits framework in combination with the rule of threes, which means that you're not gonna try to build more than three habits at any given point in time, and that for each of the habits that you select, you're gonna have three different versions. Version one is the easiest and simplest form of that habit. You can do it anywhere, at any time, it's minimal effort, there's literally no excuse for not being able to do version one of that habit. Version two, it's a little bit more challenging, it's not overwhelming, the habit is still doable, and it delivers good results. Now, version three is the most complex, the most optimal version of this habit that you can do, and one that delivers the most results and takes the most effort. For example, with your nutrition, level one is no tracking, just paying attention to portion sizes and eating protein and veggies with every meal. Version two is some loose tracking of calories and protein, but also a lot of eyeballing. Version three is now you're precisely weighing everything out, you're tracking calories and macros, logging everything, and making sure macros are within 15 grams plus minus of your targets. So this is very precise. With walking, version one might be five, 6,000 steps per day. Version two is 10,000 steps per day. Version three is 14,000 steps per day. Now, the benefit of this framework is that you can match the version of the habit to what is doable that day and to the level of motivation you have. It's how Bruce Lee said, be like water, where your plan can adapt to the circumstances. And this is very important, especially when you're just starting out, where you want that steady stream of wins, where one of the worst things that can happen for habit formation are zero days, where you do nothing. That's exactly the mistake that I see. People have version three or nothing. So they're starting and stopping and consistently losing momentum. But if you have versions of your habits that are attainable and realistic no matter what, you'll always be able to do something rather than nothing. Even if it's a super busy day, you'll be able to get 5,000 steps, maybe 20 push-ups at home, and eat protein and veggies with every meal. It still keeps you consistent. You're still maintaining momentum. And most importantly, you're still the type of person who exercises, eats healthy, and takes care of himself. And you're building that new identity over time. And then all you really need to do is pick the right version of the habit at the right time. And if there's an opportunity, you can always go to a higher level. I found this framework to be really helpful for maintaining consistency. And I'll be expanding on these ideas a lot more in upcoming videos. So do make sure to hit that subscribe button below and details for coaching if you're interested in working with me are in the description below. So check those out and I'm gonna see you in my next video.